Welcome to the highlight show for Group 4 from the second stage of Ultimate Pools Champions League. Phil Harrison, Scott Gillespie, Tom Cousins and Craig Waddingham, each of them looking to be the final player into finals night next week. Let's get straight into our first match then. Craig Waddingham taking on Phil Harrison. And it was Phil that made the brightest start, a reverse clearance and break clearance to jump into a 2-0 lead. Craig Waddingham has the break in frame three. Stephen Jameson joins myself, Simon Webb, on commentary. Really, but yeah, it, it, he's been playing so well as well. It, it's not a case of he, he's staying with a cut break and he's made a ball. It's not been a case that he's, he's struggled. Straight. It's been more that he's he's playing amazing. He just keeps running into a performance here and there at the wrong time. I mean, he has just poked those really. But he's got a ball. I mean, look at look at how nice this split is. Could have gone either colour set there, really, and not had too much option, uh, too many problems, rather. The yellow nearest the left centre, maybe, but I mean, these reds are just, oh, they're just absolutely lovely layout for him. Although, having said that, has he left himself a slightly awkward angle here? Straight enough to pull back or go through? Yeah, it's slightly awkward. Yeah, and he's put in trouble. Yeah, decent shot required next. Cushion didn't bounce as much as he would have liked. The sort of thing that can catch Craig out, he's not the world's biggest practicer. Yeah, well, you say that. He told me tonight when I caught up with him that yeah, he has been putting more time has in than he, he has been. Yeah, because normally we used to hear him say, yeah, I hardly play. I just, you know, a frame here or there and a game of snooker and I'm good to go. But he's actually been putting the time in. Super shot. He'll just take having any shot. It's quite an interesting one with Craig. He plays a very different style to Phil Harrison. Two players who you'll notice the way they go about the game. It is very different. Craig will just leave himself shots. He's a tremendous potter. Back himself anywhere on the table. Yeah. And so doesn't ask too much of himself in terms of cue ball control. Just Good job, really, because he can't get a hold of it in this visit. Yeah, shake of the head, because he's, he's nowhere again. He keeps landing in no man's land. But you are right, he, he backs his potting, he, he gets around the table in a completely different way, whereas Phil just gives you that certainty he's going to clear up, because it feels like he's in perfect position all the time. Craig, he's a big shot here, this is tough. Yeah. Keep, keep digging, Craig, son. Keep digging. It, this this whole visit, because, the, well, you said it right at the start, how good are these reds? This whole visit just shows how easily it can get away from you. He finishes off angle by a roll or two on his very first positional shot, doesn't land on his next one, and then he's digging, digging, and digging, and eventually he lands in a position where he snookered. So what was a very good layout for a top professional player has got away. Can you pull a rabbit out of the hat? Well, there is your answer. And Phil Harrison should go 3-0 in front here. Oh, that's a big surprise. Mistakes you feel like will come at a premium tonight. Craig does not make many of them. Obvious issue for Phil here is the one <coughs> above the left centre pocket. For me, that's probably part of the reason why Craig went reds. He's coming around to see how difficult is that to drop in the middle. He's got a good ball to land on it into the middle pocket. If he doesn't feel like it does, then does he look to move it? Does he look to take it long? If he's going to take it long, he may want to get rid of the other one first. Or could take it down the table, of course. Options are there. He's also one of the world's best doublers. A lot of people would have him down as the very, very best, but it doesn't double. Well, not in the middle, at least. <laughs> no, true. Oh, big problem now. That is a that is a loose one. And Phil knows it. This is where match clock and shot clock can catch him out. Does need that little bit of time to get over himself. Shot clock almost, I feel like, hurries Phil up to a point where he, he stops overthinking. It can help him, and I've personally thought it can stop him being his own worst enemy. 
Well, the one thing, obviously, it's one of the running sort of in jokes in the ball world is that, you know, he feels perfect when he shakes his head. But he does show his emotion out there. He does show his frustration. But if you're playing on the 30 seconds and especially on the 15 seconds, you just don't want to waste five seconds shaking your head and being annoyed with where you've landed. You've just got to formulate the next plan. He's got a little bit of an angle here. Loads of bottom. Oh, he's very nearly played a brilliant shot. Well, he's got a shot here in terms of a safety option. If he can hide the one in the middle of the table, which he can do with the eight ball, try and force Craig into playing the other red, it could open up the, uh, the yellow. He'd love to be able to get the yellow in play a bit more than it is, though. Does he bump it a bit firmer and get it out, or does he leave it where it is? Yeah, he pumps it, so he, he's trying to get it more in play to put more jeopardy on the shot for Craig Waddingham. Craig back to the table. He wouldn't have expected this. Can he manufacture something? Are you seeing he's whether there's a shot to the bottom right he's here? He's not looking at the pot here. I think he is. If, it, if he can't get to the potting angle, he's looking at something off the yellow, but I think he can just about get to the potting angle. This would be some shot. No, he was trying to play it off the yellow. He didn't, couldn't quite get there. And he's had a result. He's had a result, those two coming together, because he knew he was leaving the yellow on the break line in the open. Now Phil's got to play it. A big positional shot. Yeah. Phil, to win this frame here, has got to play a really, really good shot. There's room to access the yellow at the bottom, but he's got to get almost flat on the bottom cushion. I'm not sure if he can hit this firm enough to get there, as in it will throw too wide. No, he could get there. Just over hit he it. Hit it. Yeah, he has. Oh, can he still sneak it through? Well, there's your answer. <laughs> if I had a penny for every time <laughs> I've watched Phil Harrison look up at the sky like that. But it highlights my point. He's used seven or eight He's seconds fine. there. He's absolutely fine. <laughs> if that doesn't illustrate the point. <laughs> he had to turn that in with an awful lot of left-hand side, but sneaks it in, puts pressure on the next pot, but he is on the eight ball here. This is essentially at this stage in the match, into the 15 second shot clock, we go, less than five minutes left, this feels like match ball, and it has been missed. We talked about Craig Waddingham being one of the best potters in the world, he needs it right now. This is, this is the match, his chance in the match, right here on this shot. That's a surprisingly long way off. Yeah, gave him the big build-up and he didn't get particularly close. It was a very tough shot, mind. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you, could, you <laughs> almost expect too much of these great players. Phil's not going to miss this one. Goes cushion first, just to be safe. Shake of the head from Craig Warding, and I dare say we'll see a shake of the head from Phil Harrison as well. Not the same explosion this time for <coughs> Phil. Well, in four minutes, can Craig Waddingham salvage something? Draw is in play, it's worth pointing out. We will take the result at zero on the clock, whatever it may be. And if that, say, for example, is three all, they both take a point each and live to fight another day. And Craig is obviously going to have a dip here. There's no point in playing safe from here. Not the sort of layout you overly inviting to sort of run through either. This is fiddly, there's problems everywhere you look. It's hard to even think about digging and having a dip here, but well, he's gonna play safe it looks like, but three minutes on the clock, you know, you're in trouble. So Phil, even though he completely mishit the break, you saw that on the replay, hit below the right center pocket as we look. Uh, actually, rewarded with a horrible layout, which is to his advantage. Yeah, he won't mind this at all. If the red above the eight ball goes, then all these reds actually clear and, and without too much fuss. It looks like it does. You know, it's tight when you look at it from this angle. I'm pretty sure you can get to the potting angle.
be for either player. Looks like it's going to be for Craig in this match. Doesn't eliminate them. It's important to remember. Craig's still got two more matches to play tonight. If he wins both of those, he's got every chance of still qualifying. That's the thing we've noticed with the standard this year. It's so competitive that actually it's incredibly difficult to win three matches in a row. There's been more of a propensity for comebacks. And also, when you need a favour, quite often the player you need a, a favour from is tended to be world class. Oh, no doubt. Which helps. Yeah, two wins out of three, and you, you feel like you're a really good chance to be in a shootout of some sort. I must say, that missed eight ball aside, Phil's looked relatively sharp in and amongst the balls. Very good clearance, this, from Phil Harrison. And he's going to whitewash Craig Waddingham to kick off the night. The farmer is on the march. 4-0 win to kick things off. Scott Gillespie coming in as a lucky loser for Jake McCartney, who is injured, will take on Tom Cousins in our second match. The first four frames were shared, all with clearances from the break, including a golden break from Scott Gillespie. And Tom Cousins has the break in frame five. The enforced break due to COVID to recapture that sort of form. He's edging closer now. And as he alluded to in his interview with you, Simon, he's fully aware of how well Tom Cousins is playing at the moment and how good he is. But like any player, Scott backs himself and just wants the chances. And here is the first chance to edge ahead. He can keep Tom Cousins off the table now. Trickiest layout off a Tom Cousins break though. Red and yellow together in the bottom half of the table. Awkward. And if it's yellow, going to be yellows, which is, looks like what he's eyeing up here. It's away from the rest of the yellows. I only wonder whether it drops in the right centre. It probably does. But it's still not a great ball because you don't have a good ball to sort of land on it into the right centre. So this is far from ideal. And it obviously goes without saying, this is a massive visit to the to the match really. Well he could probably get there now if he wanted to in this yellow closest to the left side pocket. Yeah I, I quite like that. I mean for me you either get there now or you leave it late but if you leave it late you really are asking for trouble but the, it connects well to the eight ball. Was very close to time fouling there it was just in time. Did well there you know he's played a good shot too I think he's hit the gap. I think the yellow closest to the two reds together actually passes into the middle pocket, which makes his work a little bit easier. These aren't the finishes where Scott would tell you himself he excels at. It's a little bit nippy and a little bit a little bit tricky. He had a good look to whether the yellow goes in the right centre pocket, because that would have really helped. He do he really does want the yellow nearest the left centre to be his ball onto the one in that we're talking about being last, the more awkward one. Yeah, because it's slightly lower than the pocket. He can manufacture more of an angle. He can pot it high as we look at it. He, might be, to, he might be able to play on it now. Oh, he's going to move it. That's a great shot. It's very good. Off I'm, the I'm, plant as well. Yeah, I'm surprised to see him move it because I thought it did go, but he played it in such a way where he was guaranteed to be on the one in left centre if he got that full ball contact on the red and yellow, which he did. And he'd have been very unlucky not to open up and leave a, a good chance to get out. So, well played shot. Oh, well. Done all the hard work. And falls at one of the final hurdles. That was all from digging down on the cue ball. Yeah, just you don't quite get that perfect and you throw some side on the cue ball, deviates and all of a sudden you miss what looks like a very simple pot. And it was a very simple pot, but it was the cue ball that he was trying to put with it that caused the problem. Still a major surprise to see that happen. I'm interested, what was he trying to... Well, he just needed to get the cue ball back to the centre of the table. 
if he just drops it in, because he's on the cushion, if he just drops the, the yellow in, he's not good on the next ball. So he had to try and get the, the cue ball back to the almost bang in the center of the table. Anywhere near that would have been would have been fine on both yellows. Oh, bad moment for Scott Gillespie. Tom Cousins is going to get away with one. And for as good as Tom's been, you can't have runs like he's on without plenty of moments like this. It's amazing how many players will tell you that when they hit a bit of a streak and they find a bit of form and they're winning tournaments, how many opportunities they're handed than they, than they were before. The players are scratching around for form and results. They don't tend to get these sort of rubs. Tom Cousins is in front. Right. Courtesy of a Scott Gillespie mistake. And it was a big one. That's the 15 second shot clock we go. I feel like you've got quite short odds on a dry break there from Scott Gillespie, but maybe it's his sort of form and that's influencing things. That's a lovely break. I felt like they gave, he gave that one even more. A little bit of frustration in that one, but they really exploded on him. And it's a lovely layout for him. You can just die this one in. Oh, I'd love a little bounce. I mean, he's okay. I mean, he's, he's not much of a problem, but a little bounce there. And the one he's about to clip back into the centre pocket just gives him that little bit more control. Are they still absolutely fine? And nice, actually. Yeah, in good shape. full here. lip of the pocket, which I always feel like it's quite risky because it can make you look very silly if you get that one even a little bit wrong. short straight into the bottom right hand corner it was where he was trying to get to off the red left center but now the red's taking him up the table so this is a a full reroute here this was his second last ball it still won't be a problem for him though yeah, it was there were so many options there that did enable him to sort of play areas it's just that he always had this one as his eight ball. This was the one to get on the eight ball, but leaves the red a little bit higher, so he can just drop through and take the red left centre now. Again, he wanted to be straight, and he's short of straight, so may just have to accept what he's got here, which is leave an eight ball long. It looks like he's jacking up, so it may not be. That's a confident shot. Yeah. Three, three. Scott Gillespie not going away. We've got one minute and 55 seconds left. We will have one more frame. You can have all the belief you like. He's not necessarily going to have a chance in this final frame if Tom Cousins can make a ball and run these out. Well, he has made a ball. Do you know what else he's made? He's made the cue ball. And Scott Gillespie has one minute and 45 seconds and ticking to win the first match of the night for these two. And these reds are good. These reds are really good. He doesn't actually need to rush here. You've got five reds in the eight ball. It's six pots, 15 seconds a shot. You don't have to be sprinting around the table. Yeah, takes it long to guarantee the good angle on the red left centre to track down the table. I think he's going to leave the red over right centre for potentially last ball. really nice now just don't let the eight ball get in the way only thing that can go wrong here and he has a massive gap between the red and the yellow the eight ball and the yellow so there's really no problems Lovely. Oh, 
this is almost in ultimate pool terms. Scott Gillespie, 2.0. Confident. Scott Gillespie, full of belief. And he's going to beat Tom Cousins in his first match tonight. Tom Cousins will have to come from behind. Tom Cousins will stay out in the arena to take on Craig Waddingham. Both players losing their opening match and need the win here to have any chance of going through. And it is Tom that has the opening break. Both of them feel strange that we're in this position right now. Tom Cousins hasn't really done much wrong. Craig Waddingham will look for a little bit of a recovery. Wasn't exactly flying in his match against Phil Harrison to start tonight. Only thing that went wrong for Tom was a, a dry break and an in-off break, which was kicked in off. It wasn't straight enough. Now that the, they are the margins at times. Immediately handed a chance here in the opening frame to start with a break clearance. Good opening pot. Now pick your route. If you pot the one over bottom right, then you're going to need a very good angle on your last ball just to make sure you get into the bottom half of the table. So I could see him going up the table now. A man playing with confidence if he takes this one on. Well, why wouldn't you with what he's done over the last seven months? Yeah. The reason being the, the red over bottom right gives you better access to the eight ball than any of the ones at the top. Mm, overdid it though. Oh, well, well. I wonder. Big chance for Craig Waddingham to get himself into the mix. It looks a tricky layout. Two yellows below the eight ball and the red block in the bottom right, but it looks like there's plenty of room to play the yellow off the cushion, off the red, opens everything up, and he has the perfect ball to connect to that one as well. So actually just an ideal layout to get going. Oh, red's just about, no. Okay, lovely little secondary nudge there. Yeah. Just That's when I thought fight. that Reb was going to get in the way, it was the perfect little kiss. Yeah, it was close to being horrible, that, wasn't it? Yeah. suspect he'll go up the table now. One bottom left is good for the eight ball. That bin that said, though, is just screwed the left-hand side of straight, whereas if he was the right-hand side of straight, he could have got right behind this yellow at the bottom of the table. So had to leave much more distance, which under normal circumstances for Wad is no problem, but pressure building tonight, not off to the best of starts in the first match. This will be a nerve setter, though. He can punch home his long straight one, which he does. Settling down. One nil wads. So this is a must win, really. Craig's persisting with that cut break. He's made a ball and he's got a nice split. It is a it is a good split, and he has made a ball. It just doesn't seem right seeing it, to be honest with you. It doesn't yeah, look it feels a bit weird watching it, doesn't it? It doesn't feel a natural fit, to be honest with you, to see Craig cut breaking, but he's obviously got a reason. We will ask him. Yeah. <laughs> you can be assured of that. I think it has to be Reds here. Reds all seem to connect. The only question for me is, where's the eight ball going? Does the eight ball go bottom right? Because the way these are laid out, it's almost as though the natural is for the red top left to be the last ball. These two in the bottom, right center, top right. But then does the eight ball go bottom right hand side? I think that's part of the reason he's just played that. I think he was 
trying to get the full ball contact, get the yellow out of the way, stay on the red to the bottom left and open up a window for the eight ball. It's gone a little bit wrong. But he's absolutely fine in a strange way because he can get through to the red over the right middle. That wasn't tidily executed, but he got away with it. Yeah, now the red at the bottom becomes potential last ball. Still not absolutely guaranteed to get nicely on the eight ball though. And with the angle he has on the red to the top right now, he may leave the cue, leave the cue ball quite close to the cushion, making getting on the one at the bottom nicely tricky as well. May just have to accept distance like he did in the previous frame. Off the red at the bottom, you're almost asking for the eight ball to... Like, we can't really get straight on it. So the yellow at the bottom of the table gets into play here. Similar shot to what was asked of Scott Gillespie a few frames ago. Ideally, he wants to just flick around the back of this yellow. I think he might just about be straight enough to screw it. As long as the eight ball goes left centre, he's absolutely fine here. If it doesn't go left centre, he's got a problem. He had more angle than I thought. Had to do what Scott did and float round. That's an excellent shot. Played it well. Any touch on that yellow and he's he's done. Very, very good. But Craig Waddingham is not done yet. Tom Cousins all of a sudden looks a little bit vulnerable here. The next two frames were one with break clearances. We joined Tom Cousins breaking off now 3-1 behind. Really he needs to win three frames if he wants to get through tonight. Eight balls racing. And the only thing Craig warning him to potentially hang his hat on here is the fact this eight ball has gone a little bit awkward. Yellow is the decision, that's no great surprise. What do you do about this eight ball? I think if he can work a pattern, and he can yellow right center is your last ball oh he's not going to get that far but if you look on that overhead there if he'd worked it through so yellow goes right center pocket then it gets you to the eight ball and back yourself to make it down the cushion i think that would have been the plan i still can't believe that's not gone in it's almost like he needed a little bit more pace and it had gone in it was just on the side of the pocket wasn't it more pace i think it would have dropped but just travel to hint too much on the side. Well, Greg Waddingham, this is your chance. It's not nice on reds, but this is your chance. Go into his bad red off this one. Alex to play on it instead. So I think that's a sign of confidence. It's also a big pocket that he wants to play to open up the red at the bottom. Not sure if it does go to the bottom left, so he needs to open up the pocket to bottom right. He also has the same problem with the eight ball, and then he's got the red on the break line as well. So there's a lot going on here for Craig. 15 seconds on the pocket. Not guaranteed to get out here. This needs to be a really good finish from this position. to come up behind this red. Yeah, he's almost putting himself into a bit of a corridor here. Has he landed on the double? I think just about. But you can't get close to the last red and then the eight ball doesn't go. Not fluke the treble, has he? No. So Tom Cousins to stay alive. He's not fluked the red, but the red's got in the way. We may have seen Tom just leave them as they are and pick them apart if that red doesn't go there. But he doesn't have a good way of getting on the eight ball now. So, yeah, going to try and move it. Very good. That's a great shot. Really good shot, that. That just wobbled a little bit. But he's playing markedly quickly. He knows he's got to rattle off three in a row here. And the 
as close to Tom Cousins running around the table as you'll ever see. 3-2. Oh, heat ball. Oh, wow. Craig Waddingham dumps Tom Cousins out of the Champions League and he does it with a golden break. Tough one for Top Cat to take. But that cut break pays dividends for Craig Waddingham. And he stays alive. Match four is always the pivotal one. The winners of our opening two matches, Phil Harrison and Scott Gillespie battling it out. The winner taking control of the group. And it was Phil Harrison that won the opening frame. And we join frame two deep into a tactical exchange. Three has chewed up a lot of the match clock. Which will come into play now, you feel. Phil immediately throws his hands up. Scott still might not take this on. The yellow just directly south of the cue ball as you look at it from this angle. The one closest to that red is a big, big problem for Scott. Yeah, Phil threw his arms up in the air like he'd given away the frame here, but Scott's too uh, experienced to fall for that. He knows there's work still to be done here. No value to Scott potting the yellow that he'd been left on there on the triangle line. Scott's played a good cue ball, but not the best yellow. He'd like to have left that a little bit more open. Phil's not got a huge amount to go at. This is a fascinating little battle. It really is. People tell me this game, at this rule set, is just all out attack and that's it. You know, I refer you to this frame because this is fantastic to watch. Phil's looking at the cannon off this red. Oh, he lined that up. That was clever. Oh, that was nearly an amazing shot. And now it might be Scott's turn to go. Can he play? Well, he can play the yellow off the red, but does he have an angle in doing that to get the cue ball out? If not, does he play it direct and try and top through yellow by the eight ball, goes left centre then, and then back yourself to work around? A couple of options. It's the direct. Yeah, and that shot. is perfect. The difference between landing a roll pass straight and a roll shorter straight there is huge. And he's got the right side of straight to be able to get on the one to the top right-hand corner. Well, Phil Harrison there decided to hit the switch and try and end the safety exchange by taking on the aggressive option. He wasn't far away from making an outstanding shot. But enjoying that red, he's handed the keys to the frame to his opponent. I think Scott would have preferred to finish absolutely flat on the cushion and he could top through and finish above the yellow and control coming down. Now he might be quite close to the cushion on his next shot. I could just get it away and that's absolutely fine. better if he had one more turn of the cue ball. He's got just enough angle to pick the line he wants. He tried to force it. He's actually come a little bit too far because of that. One more turn of the cue ball on the previous shot and it just plays it natural. A little bit delicate this. Biggest shot of the night. Big shot. Placed a double. Wow. He probably thought he couldn't miss that double with the red being there. And when he hit the second cushion, he was thinking, well, that's guaranteed to hit the red and it's in. Oh, well, if this frame wasn't interesting before, it certainly is now. Phil what does Phil do about that red? I think if I'm Phil Harrison, I am running the clock. I'm, I'm playing for a 1-0 win here if I'm Phil Harrison. I am just playing as far away from that eight ball. Make sure you don't leave anything that Scott can do. Make it as hard as possible and just keep doing it for six minutes. That's the plan here. I've got to be honest with you, I think Scott's best chance to get something out of this might be just to walk to the table and play the red eight ball plant and get out of here. I mean, <laughs> it wouldn't be the right thing to do, but I think he needs to, this could go on for six minutes and he might get nowhere near this eight ball. Is he thinking Jaws? 
I think it throws too wide from here. I think he is thinking it, but every chance he hits the red and pop the eight ball here. Da, da. No, nowhere near in the end. And the reason I say just walk to the table and get rid of it, you know, he could have almost taken the jaws and pot in the eight ball simply because he's going to lose this frame. Barring something silly from Phil, Scott will lose this frame, and the longer it takes, the worse it is for him. If I'm Phil, just put the cue ball straight back in the same place. Just keep doing it. May not be pretty, but it's about winning. Oh, <laughs> watch the clock. Don't time foul. Yeah. And he's done. He's he's put the red in the way as well. It wasn't just the. Oh, he's not quite. There's still there's still a route through there. I mean, it's Scott's still going to have a go. He's close, but he hits the red. Nothing changes here, Ivan Phil. I'm just keeping doing it. The only thing you'd say now is... He's going to kick the red out. He's going here. Yeah, I think this is the right shot. Yeah. Yeah, well played. Could have done with a bit more on it. And Scott was happy to see him go. Yeah, for sure. I mean... But I think Phil didn't tr didn't trust it anymore. Because if he'd have kept on leaving that shot, Scott could have played exactly what he just played. And he'd have then potted the eight ball and won the frame. But this is perfect a scenario for Scott. In the situation he was in two minutes ago, he was he'd be thrilled to see Phil have this red. God, this red is missable. It, exactly. Big, big shot this. And a big pot from Phil Harrison. That's clutch. Phil Harrison wins an epic frame, really. Just in terms of the time on the clock. That was what? Close to a 15 minute frame, I think. Makes a ball, cue ball stays on the table, and Scott Gillespie has a chance to rattle off a quick finish here. These have come out pretty nice. Wasn't his best break, actually, but he won't really care. Toughest shot is probably his first one. He wants to pot something in the middle of the table. Yeah, you're right. They've not, I mean, they've come out well, but the first shot is everything here. Cool, how'd you like that? First shot was everything, and Scott Gillespie gets everything. Brilliant shot. The only thing with making the red in the middle as well, oh, has he got the gap to one bottom right now? He looks like he has. Well, if he has, that's just come out millhouse for him. Yeah. I was about to say the only problem with making the one over the middle was the one over the, the middle was the connection to the left-hand side once you got rid of the one at the bottom. He can get back across from the one on the left here. Yeah, lovely shot. Yeah, that's super. Cue ball in hand perfect for Scott Gillespie. We just have to hope... Phil Harrison's next break gives him an opportunity and he'll have plenty of time. May even be time for another frame after that. Such as the pace of this one. Scott Gillespie's rattled through in a little over a minute. This eight ball for 2 1. To stay in the hunt. Heart of the pocket. It's dry. How is that one dry? Scott Gillespie with a chance to tie it. Just a slight strange one there. The natural instincts of a pool player to sort of sit there and give it the old teapot and stare at the table and think, how's that dry? But your opponent's got 15 seconds. You've got to get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Again, a tough opener. And this time... It's not to be. And Phil Harrison can just pot out here. He just needs to pot balls. That's what we talked about with Stevie Dempsey a couple of weeks ago and with Sean Chipperfield last week. It's about picking the route that may be against your natural instinct, 
but what gets you closer to zero while you're still at the table? Yeah, and he's about to get down on the ball that he feels is the right one to make the clearance. For me, red to the, of the set here for taking time out the clock. Can make a case for yellows too, though. Yellow balls in play. I was seeing yellows, but I was seeing the one on the right-hand side because you drop that one in, it nudge into the red, you open up another ball and more and more go. And it wasn't about making a clearance. As I say, it's just about potting enough balls to run the clock. He will do that now, though. And Scott Gillespie concedes. So Phil Harrison wins against Scott Gillespie and gives himself every opportunity. Scott Gillespie will stay out in the arena and will have the opening break against Craig Waddingham. Both players needing victory to have any chance of going through. By winning this match and hoping for a favour from Tom Cousins in the final match of the night. If Tom Cousins beats Phil Harrison, there will be a six-red shootout between Phil and one of these gentlemen. Whoever wins this match, there's still something on the line. If this match ends in a draw, Phil Harrison is into the semi-finals of this competition, no matter what. We talk about it quite regularly that there's always a chance in that final match because of the pressure and everything else. So the winner of this match can have a feel like there's a very realistic chance simply because up against Phil Harrison is the best player on the planet right now. I mean, he's flying. So <laughs> if you wanted anybody to win a match for you, yep. he'd be at the top of my list for sure. Yeah, I did. And mine. <laughs> and and nearly everybody agree. else in the world as well. Yeah, I think so. First things first for these two guys, though. They can't do anything about that last match. They have to win this one. <laughs> Scott has to deal with the disappointment of the last match because he had an opportunity to go 1-1 with a minute or two left. He didn't take it. When does he go for the red on the left-hand side? And get straight on the next red. Yeah, can he get straight enough? Just want, doesn't want that yellow to get in the way. Going off body language, I think the natural's taking him into the yellow. If he can slide by it, straight in on the red to the bottom left, connects to the middle, and, and then he can get out from there. Yeah, he did have the angle. here trying to screw it back get on the eight ball in the middle the safer options just to bounce this one on off maybe come back a few inches and take it long no, he's gone the other way fooled me completely almost an American way of playing it I'm trying to come three cushions up for the eight ball, didn't get on it as he wanted to. And therefore, slightly surprised by that, just simply looked like he, he was straight enough just to be able to play kind of bottom left and bring the cue ball back towards the eight ball and take it to the opposite corner pocket. He tried to spin it round three. It's hard to get the side on with that shot on this table. the sort of shot you see a lot, and I mentioned it as an American shot, the sort of shot you see a lot at the at nine ball and on, and on the American table. You don't see it as much on the English table, quite simply because it's harder to play on this table. 
and on this cloth in particular. No mistakes from Wad though, knocks them up quickly. Sticking with that narrow cut break, it's starting to pay dividends. Shot's tricky. Watch the cue ball here. Delicate one. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, that's okay. He's got one long, I think. Or has he? He's tight. I don't think he has now. Going off body language. He's having a look at the plant here. This is not what he wanted at all. This is as tough as it gets plant-wise as well. Watch where the reg he's hitting goes. Yeah, he's controlled both ends of that very well. It's a really good shot. It needed to be. It really needed to be. Overdone that one. Still has a problem. Does he have the right angle just to rest on the yellow? Doesn't look like it. So plays the nudge on the red. And that's lovely. short from the overhead but I'm sure he's fine take that back he's looking long it's been a strange visit to the table this from Craig Waddingham come out as about as smelly as it possibly could. Yeah, it, it, it's a strange old visit to the table this one. He's had to dig, dig so hard, finally gets perfect position and, and leaves it a couple of rolls short. Brilliant. Never in doubt, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Both players traded reverse clearances over the next couple of frames. Scott Gillespie is now 3-1 behind and just over three and a half minutes on the clock. Eight balls moving. But it's dry. And that may well be that. That was a resigned look on the face of Scott Gillespie, you feel like, as he sat in his chair. Doesn't feel a great chance here. Doesn't need to be for Craig though. He's running a bit of clock as he goes along. He was hoping when he played that plant that the red doesn't double kiss and then it just comes down the right hand side of the eight ball. Give it a little bit of a window to get onto it. It's actually not finished too bad because he can use the one top left to now connect to it. This is a little bit about running clock. He has got half an eye on the, the clearance. The one at the bottom obviously being his big problem ball. 
who's come too far to be on the one at the top. Well, maybe it's not quite over just yet. Two minutes. Get the sense that the wind's maybe out of the question for Scott Gillespie, but can he do Phil Harrison an enormous favour? I think we may have seen a slightly different way of going about it from a Stevie Dempsey or maybe a Sean Chipperfield in terms of for Craig Waddingham there, it wasn't necessarily about winning that frame. It was about using as much of that clock as you can. And he had a few more in the open there. Could have done another minute off the clock before worrying about anything. And I know that's it's like almost anti how you should be going about the game. But in this match clock era, it wins him the match because he has the next break. But the way they're laid out here and the amount of time that Scott's having to take is, is pretty much over anyway. Combo will be the next shot, I believe. Unless Scott's playing on Bernard Cannon off the one to the middle. He's got an angle to move into that area. That's very good. Still tough, but he's got a way out now. Eight ball now goes clean. Short position on the yellow. Not sure if the red gets into play. I think it does here. And we could pot it without hitting the red, but just gets it too thick. And that will be that. So Craig Waddingham has asked the question. He's done his part of the bargain. Phil Harrison will need some kind of result against Tom Cousins. If Tom Cousins wins, we're going to a six red shootout. Craig Waddingham wins the match against Scott Gillespie and stays alive. Our final match of the night, Phil Harrison taking on the already eliminated Tom Cousins. Phil Harrison just needs to avoid defeat to have any chance of going through. And we join him with the opening break. Top Cat already eliminated. He cannot go through but he can have his own little influence. And I know from his conversations with you on Ultimate Pool Extra, Simon, he always likes to beat Phil Harrison because Phil Harrison is the player that Tom Cousins most struggles to beat. Absolutely, he said it. You know, years gone by, he said that Phil was his bogey player. But he also said it in a way which made me, made me smile because he said, if I saw Phil was in my half of the draw, I knew I couldn't win the tournament. <laughs> Mere mortals don't look at your half of the draw. You look at your first round match, but Tom's looking that far ahead. But yeah, he said he, Phil was very much his bogey player. He said that that's kind of gone by the wayside now, but he has utmost respect for Phil. They obviously squared off earlier on this year in the Pro Series final. I think that's Pro Series 1. Oh, he gets a nudge as well. That was looking like being on absolutely nothing. Gets the secondary nudge and lands plumb perfect. And let's have it right. This is not a particularly comfortable chair for Phil Harrison to be sat in. No, he shifts in it awkwardly at the top of your picture as if almost to illustrate that point. Well, like the way you said at the, the top of this match, you said all Phil has to do is not lose. Well, the guy in the other chair is the best player on the planet right now. <laughs> Not losing is a very, very hard thing to do against Tom. Yeah, people have been failing <laughs> in that for a little while now. Tom's not been at his best tonight, but he also hasn't done a huge amount wrong. He can probably count himself a little unlucky to be entering this match with no hope of qualification. Ordinarily, you'd say at this stage, well, Tom's still got ranking points to play for. Well, he doesn't. <laughs> you know, they're absolutely irrelevant to him at this stage. He's already won so many ranking points. A break clearance in the next from Tom Cousins made it 2-0. Phil Harrison now has the break in frame three. Oh, great control. Where's the ball? He's dry. 
Oh, he is dry. Oh, 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 oh. He's, he's dry, but is there anything on? This might be a right touch for him. He's yep. caught that break beautifully, you can see there. I just wonder if one of the reds that the key ball's close to here can snick in, and we just heard. Well, we had our answer. The yellow went to the top right of the table. Yeah, he had the gap. So one really awkward yellow. Going to be careful about calling it a bad yellow, the way he dealt with the previous frame. But <laughs> the one, one nearest his tip right now. So, is he on the next ball? I think he just about is as well. The way these nudges are falling for Tom Cousins, you just can't help but think we are absolutely destined for a six red shootout. Well, if it doesn't go, could move into it again here does he'll play the other one and that tells us that it does just come back a fraction too far he didn't want to leave it short and leave a bad angle better to be a roll pass straight than a roll short but it means he can't get close to the one on the cushion if he was straight in on the one to the bottom right it would be absolutely ideal he can't quite get there see the naturals just taking him up the centre of the table. No dramas, they just leave it the other way around. The game isn't this simple. It really is not this simple. These layouts he's had have been tough. They have Tom Cousins 3-0 in front. Phil Harrison made a break clearance in the next frame to get on the board, but nothing he could do as a break clearance from Tom Cousins wrapped up the match and sent Phil Harrison into a six red shootout against Craig Waddingham. Hasn't really come out nice. Needs a way to break things open. I think he could have just dropped that in. The, the red right of those three would have gone in the centre and then it would have all just been drop, drop, drop. He's working hard here now. He's working very hard. Great part. It's got to be the one in the middle. And it is. It's going to be a great finish in a sense, but it's not going to be quick enough, you feel. 31 and a bit seconds for Phil Harrison, and he knows. Any less than 31.88. And he is in the semi final. Oh, they've not split either. This could be tight now. He still appears pretty calm. I think the, the left hand one of the three might go bottom left. Yeah, it does. That makes all the difference in the world. Oh, it didn't. Oh, we still made one though. How about that? And now he can relax. Craig Waddingham is in to the semi-final of the Ultimate Pool Champions League. And look what it means to Craig Waddingham. Craig Waddingham responds to losing his opening match four frames to nil to get the job done in a six red shootout and books his place in finals night where he will take on Sean Chipperfield. On the other side of the draw, Tom Ford will take on Stevie Dempsey before the winners play each other for the beautiful trophy and the Champions League title.